Hello all. I was uh, doing some work and I got a message from uh, Will Richardson. I track some of his Twitter feeds. He's got a blog called Weblog Ed. And when um, he tweeted, he uh, mentioned this program called Simply Box. And Simply Box is a tool that um, works with your web browser and allows you to capture anything on your screen, on your web browser screen, and save it to um, containers uh, online so that you can go back later and organize them or share those resources with other individuals. It's essentially a capture, share, and organize tool. I thought about some ways you could use this in class, and I began by looking at Flickr and capturing some images from Flickr. Flickr is one of my favorite sites for um, gathering images because of the uh, Creative Commons search capability that is built into it. So if I click, uh, maybe I'm doing earthquakes, and I type the word search, I mean I type the word fault and click search, pardon me, it'll bring up a bunch of images and uh, it's got 30, 36,000 images related to faults. But if I do an advanced search, I can go down and then click the Creative Commons buttons and redo my search and it'll go through and find all those images that uh, are licensed uh, under Creative Commons. So um, here we've got an image of a fault. And if I want to use this particular image, I would select it. I could, you know, in Flickr, you could change the different sizes if you want. But if I want to capture this and save it for later, what I would do is go up to Box and Save. And then when I do that, uh, my screen grays a bit, it goes kind of gray. And it's waiting for me now to drag out a box around the part of the screen uh, that I want to capture, or the part of the browser information that I want to capture. Once I've dragged out a rectangle, it's going to show me a preview of what I have, and then I simply just drag it down to one of the containers down below. And then that information is saved in the container. The way Simply Box works is you download a toolbar helper up here at the top, and uh, it embeds it into, in this case I'm using uh, Firefox, it embeds that browser toolbar into Firefox, and that's how you bring up the ability to save and capture anything. So once you've captured a bunch of images in Simply Box, um, which I've done here for earthquakes, you can view them in a couple different ways. So right now I'm looking at uh, List View. So these are all different images I, that are Creative Commons licensed images that I captured from um, Flickr. And I thought, wouldn't it be neat if students could do this on their own and then re you know, essentially synthesize, that's what we're doing, we're taking uh, information that's already out there and creating new information about it. Wouldn't it be neat if the students could create a way to uh, repurpose all this information? You know, and the easiest way, the most obvious way would be in, in like a collage format. So if you go to view, you'll notice that there's this uh, free view. And when you select free view, essentially free view allows you to create a collage of all the different content you've captured in a specific container. There are a few issues with it, though. Well, one of them is the fact that um, anytime you grab one of your uh, captured pieces of content, it brings it to the, it, you know, to the uh, front, so it becomes the top layer. So there is some difficulty uh, if you're trying to organize these and you're being picky about how you want things to look. That you have to fudge with them a bit in order to get the images to show up on the proper layer. One suggestion I gave the people at Simply Box was just to give us maybe a right click ability and then move forward or move backwards so we can move images onto separate layers. So once you've created your collage out of the different images you've captured, you can then maybe create a new box and then just simply uh, box and save this again. So I could go ahead and click box and save and then capture that whole collage and then move it into another container and then ultimately I can share a container. So if this is my collage in the Earthquake Project container, I can share that and other people can view it. And uh, I'll show you how you do that in a minute. I'm going to cancel that process. So I was very pleasantly surprised to find that there was this uh, ability to create almost like a collage of content. To share this information now, so here it is the finished collage. To share this information, you would go up to share and then share this box, and then put in the users that you would like to share email address. You have to add at least one to create an actual link. But once you've created that link, you'll get a, an email message. 
and within that email message there will be a link to the image you created and there it is so you can share that on your website or on your blog or um, any other place you you'd want to uh, add that image and then remember because this is a uh, image we could go ahead and right click on the image and do save image as and then save this to our local computer and now that image is now saved um, to our local computer and we can import that into Keynote or PowerPoint or some kind of presentation software if we wanted to use it in the presentation or if we wanted to hard copy. Now I thought a couple things uh, that would make this even better and in a classroom situation especially maybe in a K6 environment for example, we're about to roll out uh, netbooks to some of our fifth grade uh, students at some of our schools. Uh, it would be neat if, um, because students don't have email accounts, if the teacher could create a generic class account and then create individual containers for each student. And you know what? You can do that. You can create multiple containers under one account, and then everybody can use that generic account and log in at the same time. Now, I say that uh, with a little bit of caution because I've only done it with two computers. Hopefully it'll work with three or four or six computers, everybody using the same account. I don't see why it wouldn't. Uh, and that gives you the ability to use one account with maybe, say, third grade students that don't have email accounts, where they can go ahead and begin maybe capturing content and storing it into individual containers down below that teacher has previously created. There are some disadvantages again, though. None of these containers are password protected. So if a student accidentally drags something to the wrong folder, they may think they didn't drag it and try it again to capture it again or there they you do run the risk of accidentally students maybe deleting content so students would have to be careful in terms of um, how they uh, use um, the uh, simply box account and make sure that they don't delete another student's or a teacher's uh, content so uh, that is simply box and just uh, one other idea that I hope they add to Simply Box, and that's the ability for students once they're creating that particular uh, collage to add some text. Now this is text here, but this is just a capture off a newspaper article on the LA Times. Uh, but it would be neat if a student could create a little paragraph of information here, or a summary of what their collage is, or maybe even maybe video and audio narrative. Uh, some some. Uh, summarizing their uh, collage and, and what it represents and the, and the types of content that they've saved in there. Because most websites nowadays, you know, you'll find these kind of Web 2.0 applications, that wouldn't be too far-fetched. So maybe uh, Simply Box people will take a look at their tool a little bit more closely and see that, yeah, this could be used as a presentation tool besides just uh, a tool to organize uh, resources uh, that are captured off a web page. So I hope you uh, got some ideas from that little presentation, and I'm interested to hear anything that you might have that would uh, add to the discussion related to using Simply Box in your classroom. Thanks.